Imagine being up in outer space with the opportunity to land on an asteroid. Mine it, think in gold and diamonds. I'm going to be super rich. But then rather, finding an endless supply of gallium and germanium. While we're imagining, let's say living in a far off universe, and the asteroid so happens to be inhabited by female humanoid robots who were made of gallium and germanium. As we know, two rare metals that are found here on Earth that are used in manufacturing radio frequency chips for mobile phones, satellite communication, fiber optic cables, and high-speed computer chips, and so forth. Interestingly, however, although these robots were made up of these rare metals, they had human-like appearances with giant boobs. But what really made them special was their touch, that anything they touched would come to life through fiber optics, like some sort of strange communication or control, like telekinesis. Anyways, back to reality, because I was actually just watching an Al Jazeera video about trade, gallium, and germanium, which I really just wanted to share with you guys, because I found it very interesting about current events in today's world. Anyways, check it out. It's always interesting to see how these events unfold in the future, if in fact you're clicking on this video a year from now or something. Anyways, I'll play the clip. Most people may not be familiar with gallium or germanium, but these metals are crucial for the development of products such as semiconductors, solar panels, electric vehicles, and smartphones. China is the world's biggest supplier of these raw materials, and their export will soon be controlled. From the beginning of August, firms will need to apply for permits and supply information about their intended use to gain access. Beijing says the new restriction will protect China's national security. China has always been committed to maintaining the security and stability of the global production and supply chain. It's a common international practice for the Chinese government to impose export controls on relevant items in accordance with the law, without targeting any specific country. The move is expected to disrupt global supply chains and is being seen as a response to wide-ranging high-tech export controls imposed on Chinese technology firms by the United States. It also comes days after the Dutch government imposed similar restrictions on the sale of crucial chip-making equipment. The US and the Netherlands are among major importers of Chinese gallium and germanium. I think the first audience, of course, are those who are making these kinds of decisions, which is to say, look, um, everybody holds cards and we can all play this game. The cost of these raw materials has surged, though South Korea and Taiwan have downplayed the impact of the regulation on their firms. Some analysts fear this move will provoke further similar measures between Beijing and Washington. During his visit to Beijing last month, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken defended U.S. controls as security-related and denied Washington was trying to contain China. Beijing has accused the U.S. of encirclement and suppression. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is expected in Beijing this week for a trip aimed at further stabilizing deteriorating ties. Trade and economic cooperation are atop the agenda, and it's likely Beijing will use the control of gallium and germanium as a bargaining chip in its negotiations. Katrina here, Al Jazeera, Beijing. Brain time. Congratulations. You made it this far in the video. What would you do if I told you you could have 25 years of good luck and all you'd have to do is like this video and also subscribe if you haven't already? Well, what are you waiting for? Smash that like button and you'll get 25 years of good luck. And now, back to the video. So in case you guys didn't know, Every five years, the world hosts a World Expo. And it just so happens the next one happens to be in the year 2025, which also happens to be held in Osaka, Japan. The same very hometown as probably one of the most famous female human-like robots, which is Erika. 
and her creator, Professor, the mad scientist, Dr. Hiroshi Ishiguro. And I'm super excited to share this with you guys because I'm thinking I'm probably going to have to visit Japan in 2025. So the World Expo is an event that usually takes place for six months out of the whole year. In 2020, it was held in Dubai. In 2030, it's scheduled to be in Busan, South Korea. But in 2025, the expo is going to be in Osaka, Japan. Anyways, check out some of the footage that I found about 2025. Anyways, check this you out. met me on the street. Would I startle you? Would you greet me just like any other person? The relationship between robotics and the human body is closer than you might think. In the not so distant future, even robots like me might be a part of everyday life. When I was seven years old, I visited Expo 70 Osaka. Many of the technologies on display there seem improbable, but today, nearly 50 years later, they are commonplace. My name is Hiroshi Ishiguro. I'm a roboticist. At my pavilion at Expo 2025, Osaka, Kansai, Japan, I will explore how humanity will evolve through technology. What will the world be like in 50 years? We need only imagine. We humans, we've come a long way to get where we are today. Looking back, it's hard to believe. What we have achieved. What drives us forward? What spurs us on? It's our insatiable need to learn and know, to do and grow, to twiddle and tweak and 2.0. We humans were never done. We've made monuments and cut through continents, mastered human flights, sent up satellites, walked in outer space, created user interface, built cities on sand, turned sea into land, and still we're not done. We made levitating trains and open world games, constructed super towers and grids for solar power, made houses smart, turned food into art, built self driving cars and taught bots to play guitars. But no, we're not done. We found cures for disease, performed symphonies, probed the ocean floors, made machines do our chores, deconstructed quarks, studied great white sharks, sequenced our genomes, and even 3D printed homes. Are we done yet? Oh no, we're not done. In fact, we need to do even more than ever before. Our planet is in need of help. There are challenges we can't ignore. But remember, we are humankind. No job's too big if we set our minds. If we all embrace the spirit that there really is no limit. If we rise to this occasion and come together across nations. If we integrate and ideate, we. Brain time. Congratulations. You made it this far in the video. What would you do if I told you you could have 25 years of good luck? And all you'd have to do is like this video and also subscribe if you haven't already. Well, what are you waiting for? Smash that like button and you'll get 25 years of good luck. And now, back to the video.